Hello everyone. Today we're working on my 67 F100 Southwestern Bell truck again. Uh, we're doing something I hate doing and uh, I'm not very good at it, but we're going to struggle through it together. So uh, let's go dig into it. All right, guys, like I said, uh, working on my 67F100 today. Thank you all for watching. Uh, glad to have you guys back on this video and back on this project. Uh, it's been it's been kind of a ordeal. Um, I know when I started this project, I didn't want it to snowball, and I fear that is exactly what we've done. We've snowballed it into uh, a decent-sized project. It's not just a quick uh, get it running and driving and send it down the road, and that was kind of my initial plan. But I kind of, uh, as I started working on it, I kind of grew kind of fond of this truck and I wanted to give it a little bit more love than just get it running and driving and send it down the road. So that's kind of what we're doing here. Now this is probably all for naught. I'm probably not gonna make any money on this truck because I've uh, ri just blown the budget on this thing. I'll probably just be asking for my money back on it, but uh, it'll be a labor of love, I guess. Um, I'm just hoping it'll be a real cool truck when I'm done. That's kind of, I have this vision in mind and I wanted to see it through. so. We're gonna give it a try and uh, see what we come up with. But one thing that's really been bugging me on this truck is the floor pans on it. Now, uh, the whole reason I bought this truck is because it's really rust free and uh, it doesn't have rust holes in the fenders on the outside. And that's what uh, caught my eye when I uh, saw it for sale and went to buy it is uh, on these bump side trucks, the biggest thing you normally find is uh, rust holes in the fenders down in the pockets of the fenders because they hold trash in the, the way they're made. But, um, uh, since it didn't have uh, rust in the major part of the cab, I, I went ahead and drug it home. Once I started poking around with a screwdriver, the floors just started opening up with holes everywhere. And uh, there's holes all, I mean, it's its all over the whole thing. The whole thing kind of pitted, I guess, had water sitting underneath the, uh, the rubber floor mat there. Um, a lot of times when you have these things, they're just rusted out here in the corner or something. But this one is like all, there's holes all around it. So... It doesn't look bad you know it's still solid you could stand on this thing and jump on it really but there's just holes everywhere and it does have this massive hole down here in the kick panel right down here from uh i don't know what something probably had some uh, uh debris piled up there and really chewed up that corner there in that kick panel and then we have just uh small holes uh throughout the whole thing where the the floor pans got uh thin over the years so i thought well i need to put a floor pan in this thing and uh, I hate rust repair. I'm not very good at it. And um, it's kind of, uh, I mean, I'm good with metal, but the metal I'm good with is like big, thick metal. So uh, this thin stuff always gives me problems. And I haven't, uh, I'm definitely not an expert. You know, a lot of people uh, assume that I know what I'm doing a lot of the times on this channel. Because I try to be uh, as informative and knowledgeable as I can whenever I'm making a video. And that, I guess that translates to people thinking I know what I'm talking about. And really, I just know how to Google stuff and uh, come up with an answer. And uh, this is one area where I am not proficient in is rust repair. Now, I do struggle my way through it. I have done it in the video uh, on this channel in the past in videos. Uh, so I, I am getting better with uh, every job I do. It's getting better and better. So I'm getting better at it. And uh, this floor pan is kind of a job where a lot of the trucks you buy need floor pans. So I thought it's a good uh, skill to learn and to start working on my skills and uh, get better at it. And what better project than this one because it's not a full-blown restoration. It doesn't really need to be perfect. It just needs to be better. So we're going to focus on that today and get better at uh, one of my skills and a better floor pan in this truck. So let me get you guys in here and show you guys a little bit more what I'm talking about and what we're dealing with. All right, looking back here in the uh, floor pan here, you can see I've already done some work uh, getting it kind of cleaned up. Obviously, I have the old floor mat pulled out of here, and I have the, new, the seal plates pulled off, and uh, area, everything kind of exposed. And uh, the big big thing to do when you're doing this is to make sure you find all of the rust holes. You don't want to cut out an area and then miss one. Like we have one right here, but we also have some way up here under the, the accelerator pedal. Now, if I didn't start peeling away this black stuff, 
and find this hole up here, you know, I might have cut down here where it's easy to get to, and I would have missed the holes up here. And there's even, is there one right there? Well, that's for the high beam. I don't know, I thought I saw another one up here somewhere, but we're gonna poke around at it and make sure we get all the holes when we cut everything out. And uh, we're also gonna be doing this kick panel here. I gotta make a piece, I'll probably just cut it along here and uh, replace all of this. Now it gets kind of tricky in here if you want to keep all the factory seams uh, the correct way because the floor pan, it goes, there's a piece of the cab of the rocker actually that comes up here that supports the floor pan. But then up here, the factory floor pan actually curves around and is spot welded to the uh, kick panel here. And uh, the replacement floor pans don't have that. So I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing here. Uh, if I'm going to be making my own piece because it has rotten all the way up to the edge here. So I'll be cutting that out, but the actual factory floor pan makes a 90 degree turn and is spot welded to the inside of the kick panel there. So, uh, we, you know, we could just weld to the kick panel and uh, call it good there uh, because the way they did it there, that was for ease of manufacturing. So they could spot weld up that seam down there in the bottom where well, we're not doing that. We're actually welding the thing together so we can just weld right to the kick panel. That might be what we do. We'll kind of see how it looks once we get the metal out of here. But uh, yeah, right here, it's all spot welded. So we'll spot weld this off at the rocker and uh, we'll be able to lap the uh, new floor pan on top of that and spot weld it back in. Uh, I guess Rosette weld it. But uh, we'll be cutting all along here to get rid of all of this. And uh, see, there's a hole there. So I'll be trying to get everything out in one go. And on the other side, much of the same. The kick panel looks good, but I think there's actually some uh, some pitting down there in that corner. So we might be doing the same thing on that kick panel as well. But there's just little holes all over the floor pan. Like I said, it's not bad, but it's also not great. So uh, I'm going to get after it. I'm probably going to knock out this driver's side one off camera and kind of uh, figure out my uh, how I'm going to do things. And then we'll do the uh, passenger side one together. But I will fill you guys in with how the uh, driver's side one's going. Uh, you know, as I get uh, get everything in place, but uh, I'll try to I'll try to show everything I learned on the uh, passenger side there, so I can fill you guys in with just a little bit uh, uh, some help along the way if you guys are doing this as well. So I'm gonna get after cutting this old stuff out and uh, see if we can get something going on it. All right, here we go. I got the old floor all cut out of here, and it was kind of a pain, and I spent uh, pretty much all afternoon on it here. Um, the, basically, the biggest problem I ran into is the spot welds here on the cab mount and along here. These were a little bit easier, but uh, still ran into some problems. Uh, the main thing I had was the floor pan here was uh, still together enough that you couldn't just rip it out. Like, it wasn't just rotted completely out. But it had enough pitting on the, topic, on the top and the surface that you couldn't see where the spot welds are to cut them correctly. So, you know, it was, it, it was impossible to try to find the spot welds, and I had to pry on it to find the spot welds. But anyway, finally got them all located and got them all cut without damaging the cab mount because our cab mount here is still good and solid here on the sides where they like to rot out. So we're keeping our cab mount here, uh, but uh, I didn't want to damage it by just cutting it all out. So basically what I did is I put some tape along here so I could have a nice straight edge to uh, follow uh, when I was cutting it out just so it's easier to put back in. Uh, and I had to go up higher here than I wanted to because it gets up under the pedals here, but I was able to get it cut out. And uh, when I got down here to the cab mount, I actually cut it out in a separate portion to this big piece. So then I could get up under here and pry on it with a screwdriver and find the spots where it was hanging on and then cut it. So, like here's the piece that was right here. You can see where I cut it, cut around it, and then I actually cut it on this side too so I could pry up on these spot welds and get them out. But you can see where I pried up on it, and uh, you can kind of see what I was talking about there the, where the pitting is. It was uh, in such a way that you couldn't see the uh, spot welds because usually when you're cutting a spot weld, um, there's like a divot. Let's see if I can find one here. Like right here, there's a divot right there. Then you, you know that's where the spot weld is, and you can put your cutter in there and cut that spot weld out. But you couldn't see that. With that but anyway i got it out and uh, i'll probably show you that that uh, process a little bit more in depth on the passenger side when i do that one i was just kind of struggling my way through it on this one so here's our replacement uh floor pan and uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of trace out where i think it needs to be and then give it about 10 percent more and then cut it out and just start trimming my way and uh, let it kind of fall into place 
because I'm worried if I just go to the exact line of where I cut out and then I cut it and then go back in there, it's something's going to be off and it's going to be a mess to deal with because it's a lot easier to uh, take off more metal, but it's a lot harder to add metal back on here. So if you have a big gap or something, it's harder to weld up. So that's what I'm going to do. And right here, you can see where I cut out the extra spot for that cab mount, but we're going to go straight across here and hopefully I get away from this little T indention. The uh, original floor pan doesn't have that. But I think it looks like I'm going to be pretty close to just being skirting above that. So I don't have to deal with that when I weld, it, weld the new one back in. We'll see how it goes. But that stuff I'm learning along the way. So I'm going to get to fitting this thing in. And I'll catch you guys up when I get it kind of fit into place. But uh, like I said, I'm going to show you more detail on the uh, passenger side. Uh, probably, you know, show more of that stuff. Because I'll be a little bit uh, quicker and be able to tell you guys more once I do my second one. So I'm going to get after this. All right, guys, I'm getting kind of uh, things squared away here on the driver's side floor pan. I have the uh, new replacement kind of loosely set in here, and I have been do doing trimming on it, uh, quite a bit of trimming. I really wanted to creep up on this and uh, try not to get too much material taken away, so it's taken me a while. But uh, like I said, this is my first time, so I'm kind of probably taking me a lot longer than it, uh, than it should. Plus, I'm really good at uh, procrastinating on something I don't want to do and, um, you know, something that's not very fun and I'm kind of struggling my way through it. I'm really good at procrastinating and making it take a lot longer than it should because uh, I often find other things to do instead of working on this. But I've struggled my way through it and got this far. Um, it's working really good so far. Um, there's some fitment issues that uh, are probably a lot with where I have the pan oriented but also it's probably just the way things go with this. Uh, mainly right here, we have something major going on right here that's not really fitting with the, the floor pan in this. Now it could be that the, uh, you know, looking at it right here, it looks like the pan needs to rotate this way to get this closer up in here. But then if I do that, it really screws up this corner up in here and makes it a big gap up in here. So I kind of picked to fix this and not fix that down there. So I have all this lined up really good and then once I get this kind of where I need it to be, then I'll start working on this. I figured we could probably bend that down. But then right here, it's going to be, uh, I guess I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Um, I also got this piece down here cut out and replaced. You know, it's just a big flat piece. Uh, the rot went all the way up here. Well, it was just pitting all the way up here. But I went ahead and cut it out because it was thin. But we have that big hole filled right here and uh, all that replaced. But it's I just got it welded in. We don't have ground down yet. And... Uh, uh, did get a little bit too much material taken off right here, but uh, we'll see if we can get that kind of patched up. Um, I got some uh, copper stuff I can put behind there, a copper backer. You can kind of build up and fill gaps a little bit. But yeah, it's working really good. Um, I have uh, a lot of it pretty much trimmed up. Like I said, right here, there's a, if you can tell, there's like a gap right there. And then there's, it overlaps here and then it comes back down to a gap right here. So I need to take a little bit off right here, but I'm going to be doing that, you know, with, uh, being really careful with that kind of stuff and see we're a little low right here. So, you know, hopefully when I take this out, it'll bring that up. And then we got a little spot right there when you take, you know, that kind of stuff, I think we'll do a pretty good job of getting it kind of fit in there. I wanted to get it out of here and show you guys up underneath here. So here's the cab mount. Um, I sprayed this with some undercoating stuff, uh, just some internal frame coating. This is what I have, basically just any kind of rust, paint over rust kind of stuff to get, uh, just put a layer of protection here with this rust. You know, this cab mount is still in really good shape and we want to keep it that way. And then along here where we're going to be welding uh, the spot welds on, I sprayed it with, it's over here. I sprayed it with this stuff. It's just a weld through primer. So, uh, you know, it's got a zinc coating in it that uh, prevents rust, helps prevent rust. And it's also, uh, I think it's got metal embedded in it so you can weld through it. But anyway, uh, I welded on right here and it worked really good. So we'll see how that works with the uh, rest of the spot welds. But basically after I get this pan all set into place, I'm going to uh, trace where that cab mount is and I'll drill holes, pre-drill holes in this floor pan and uh, weld, weld that to that cab mount. But I'm going to get after the finessing and we'll see what we come up here in this corner and I'm going to get after it. All right, guys, we're going to skip ahead a few days. I have the uh, floor pan all the way installed now. So everything's installed and it's welded in. 
Uh, sorry, I didn't film much of this, but like I said, I'm going to show you some more in-depth stuff on the other side. This was kind of just to get my uh, get my bearings straight and to uh, you know learn all the stuff I need to tell you about on that side, basically. But over here, I talked about this corner. We had some problems with it. Uh, ended up just hammer and dolling it, and I trimmed it to follow that line, and it worked really good. Uh, this slope is probably not exactly factory, but I think it looks okay. I did have a little bit of sliver right here. I'd add a piece of metal. That was no big deal. Another thing I had to do was right here in this corner, the, the uh, pan didn't taper off enough this way. So here along where I drilled the holes to spot weld it onto the cab mount there, this was all the correct height. But then down here, it was up like half inch or more. Uh, so it wouldn't come down here to the, the channel that it, uh, the rocker here, I guess would, what it would be that, uh, it spot wells down here. So, uh, I ended up cutting a slit here and then kind of hammering the, the pan down. So it, uh, set flush and was able to make that work. Uh, but you know, like this is probably not the correct factory orientation, but I guess it looks okay. And same thing over here, the actual pan was too narrow and I uh, had to add a piece down here in the corner. And uh, I'm gonna seam all of this here uh, so it's not a collection point for any water that gets under here under the floor mat. It's not gonna go right here to this corner and be able to cause all kinds of problems again. So I'm gonna seam all this up and uh, and as well as all the seam around here, I'm gonna try to do a pretty neat job with it uh, to make it look uh, finished and not like you just slabbered a bunch of seam sealer on it. But um, I ground the welds down here you, as you can see and it didn't, you know, didn't completely get away all the weld markings. I guess you'd have to come back in and fill all these low spots and then grind it back down again, which would be a lot of work. Uh, probably not enough uh, that something that this truck needs. So I'm just going to put some seam sealer on this and fill up any, uh, if I have any pinholes or micro holes or anything like that I missed with the welder. It'll seal that off and it'll also level everything out and uh, make sure we don't have any uh, rust problems in the future. So... And then after I do all that, I'm going to paint the floor, uh, all this bare metal and stuff with a uh, Pour 15 type product. I actually use chassis saver, but it's basically the same stuff. So now that this side is pretty much done, we need to get over there on the other side. Now this side is not as bad. Uh, definitely not as bad as the other side. And uh, I actually considered maybe not doing this side, but then I kind of thought, well, if I did that side, might as well do this side. So we're here. Um, this spot right here is, is a bad spot. And then down here in these uh, channels is a bad spot. And then up here, we have a hole here. And then this area to deal with here. We don't have a hole in the, the rocker here like we did on the other side, or the kick panel, sorry, like we did on the other side. But we do have a bunch of just thin metal here on this uh, floor pan. So I don't know. I'll probably need to just cut all that out and replace it because it'll be hard to weld to. And uh, we'll probably just do the same thing, come up here and cut all of this out. Just because if you try to just cut out the holes and go to this stuff where it's thin pitted metal, it'll blow through it really easy with the welder. So uh, we're going to get to cutting that out uh, here pretty quick. And I'll show you guys kind of my process on it a little bit better on this side. Hey guys, back here on the 67. We This is like a few weeks later from the last clip you just saw of me uh, coming over here to start work on this side. We had to go up to Indiana and I picked up that Harbor Blue 67. But now we're back in the shop, so now it's uh, back on this bell truck. Wanted to show you guys what I'm doing here to prep uh, for the floor pan on the passenger side. Now, first thing I did was I took my scraper and uh, got rid of all this black stuff uh, because it's gonna be a pain to cut through and weld and uh, just scraped it off before I did the cutting or every, everything because it's going to be easier when you're not dealing with a cut seam there. So all that's all cut off and I have straight lines to, uh, measured off here. On the other side, I did it with tape. I might come in here with tape and go around here to make sure they connect nice and easy. The biggest thing I learned on, on the other side that I want to uh, uh, tell you on this side was make sure your lines are straight. The straighter your lines are, the easier it's going to be to fit up because if you do... If you have a bunch of this going down your line, you know, then you got to match the other pan uh, perfectly and it's a, it's a big pain. So the straighter you can make your lines, the better it is, the easier it's going to be to fit, fit it in. So uh, I just had a straight edge here and I marked, marked everything, but then we have these compound curves where this isn't going to exactly work. So that's why I think I'm going to get some tape in here 
and uh, just make sure I'm getting this as straight as I can and cut it as straight as I can because it's going to help us out because on that side especially along here I kind of got off a little bit and had to change the angle and then I was going down too much and I had to change the angle again to get back up here to this and it made this part right here really difficult so I'm going to try to uh, get it cut as straight as possible and uh, we'll cut to that right now all right here we go I have it fully ready to cut I have a nice straight line up here and then uh, as straight as I could get it right here and I tried to get it as straight on this edge uh, as I could and then right here we we taper off towards the uh, rocker here so uh, once we get all this cut we're gonna have to do the spot welds all along here and then up here and then we'll have spot welds right here with the cab mount and uh, looks like we're gonna have close to the same problem as the other side with uh, the spot welds being really tricky to find right here so once you get it kind of started, you can kind of guess where they are just by the orientation, but getting started is the hard part. But for now, we're just going to cut what we can out here. And uh, if you're doing this, do remember up here, you don't just plunge it all the way in and cut. Uh, cut real lightly because you don't want to cut through your cab mount right here if you're keeping your cab mounts. Now, a lot of times when you're doing floor pans, you're doing cab mounts too. But we're lucky enough to have solid cab mounts on this truck. So going to be real light right here and, and this these areas where that cab mount is uh, pinch welded up to this uh, floor pan so we don't cut through the side of the cab mount as well. So gonna get after that and uh, see if we can get this thing cut out. All right, I have the majority of the thing cut out and uh, went pretty smooth. Like I said, I tried to do the straightest cut I could here and I actually used the cutoff wheel to tell me where straight was. So it actually wasn't where my mark was, but I just allowed it to uh, cut as straight as I could. And then over here, I kind of went up this way because it uh, just made the most sense with the way it was cutting versus going straight up here and trying to make a square corner up here. I just angled off because this is all good metal anyway. But I did, since uh, the last time I was talking here, I did move this up because of that T-shaped indention on the uh, aftermarket floor pan. I forgot about that, so I put the old one in here, and uh, up here is where uh, it kind of ends. So I cut up here, and I actually left some room here because I have already cut the floor pan, this one, up here to where the top of that is, and I marked it. And that's what this mark up here is, so I went kind of down just so I have room to massage it in. And plus... Just laying it on top, you're not going to get an exact spot. So once it goes down in, I usually find that it's uh, lower than the mark you make up here. I did the same thing over here and just kind of uh, massaged it in, basically. But now we're working on pinch welds. I'm going to get these right here, and then we'll work on the, the cab mount ones. These are going to be a lot harder than these. These are pretty simple. I have a uh, uh, hand punch here, a spring-loaded deal. You can just use a center punch if you want to. But I have that with my... Uh, spot weld cutter this thing right here so it has a pin on the front that you can go in your indention you made with your uh, punch but the hard part is finding the spot welds I think there's one here what I like to do is uh, get a screwdriver in here and try to pry it up you can tell where it's glued down and stuck down and right here I've done that and I think it's right here once you get going it kind of like I said it gets a little bit easier but I'm gonna do the first one here so you guys can see my process and then I'll knock the rest of them out all right, like I said, I had a screwdriver and kind of just got under here and just a, little, just a little bit of pressure and you can see that it's not moving here, but right here there's nothing. So I know there's one in this area and just going by the look of it, you can kind of tell where the indention is where it was pinch welded together and you just kind of got to guess if you can't tell. So if it was a really nice clean truck, you'd be able to see it nice and clean and easy. But then again, you probably wouldn't be putting four pins in it, would you? We'll give this spot a try. And I've actually had them where there's been two like side by side too. So just because you think you missed the spot, you may actually have more than one spot weld here. Which is what I'm kind of wondering is here is happening here because it's such a big area that it's stuck down. 
Let's see if we got this area opened up at least. Not quite. Gotta go a little bit more. go so we're working that up like i said it just takes some time you guys got to fiddle with it and find the spots where it's stuck down and get it pried up we got this one on well on its way we'll have to work our way up here so i'm gonna get after that and see if we can get this thing knocked out All right, here we go guys. I got the uh, pan all cut out and I did uh, the same thing as I did on that side. Uh, when I got down to the cab mount area, I cut around the, the pinch welds here to be able to locate them. I tried to do it all in one piece, but uh, just was gonna be too much of a pain to find all those spot welds to get them uh, drilled out. It's just so much easier when you have a, a thin strip of metal here, you can kind of pry up and you can find exactly where it's hanging on and uh, drill those out. I did uh, get into the cab mount here with the cutoff wheel. But uh, we'll weld that up, and uh, it hopefully won't look too bad on the underside, but uh, we'll weld that seam up again. I, I got the angle wrong. For, for some reason, I was thinking it was like this, when it's, you know, this side's like that, and this side's like this, and I was kind of, I, you know, had a brain fart there. But it should weld up and be okay. Uh, other than that, everything looks pretty good. I got a little bit more to clean up here on this uh, where the rocker this piece is still welded on. It was so rotten here, it just came apart. I didn't, I didn't actually cut any of those spot welds there. So where the metal was spot welded on, it's still attached. I'll have to clean that up. And uh, yeah, so I hope uh, this corner right here doesn't give us too much problems. Uh, we'll see how it goes once I get the pan in. I'm gonna go show you the pan right now and show you how I uh, uh, do the template to cut it out uh, and uh, get it close enough to get started fine tuning it in here. All right, here's the uh, old pan, and uh, I have it clamped on here to our new pan here. And uh, if you can see, I have lots of clamps on here because uh, it's not an exact fit. And if you just set it in here, it's likely gonna be in the wrong uh, orientation. I think that's on the other side where I got messed up right here on this seam. I think the pan was kinda 
it wasn't really wanting to sit in this corner very well and I kind of didn't spend enough time getting it in the right position. But I think this one's all in the right position. The, uh, the what do you call these, the ribs here line up really good on the old pan and it's down in there uh, really tight. So hopefully this is the uh, kind of correct orientation. I have it all traced out here. And of course I'm going to, uh, when I cut this, I'm not gonna get really close to it. I'm gonna get semi close, probably on top of the yellow line. And then I'll just fine tune it as I get it in there. It probably takes more time, but I think it's gonna be easier in the long run uh, when we go to weld it in so we don't have a big gap to fill somewhere. So um, that's how I'm gonna do that. So we're gonna cut this out and uh, hopefully it'll fit in there really good. Uh, also the top right here lined up really good. So hopefully our top cut right here is correct because I've already cut this to what we cut the floor pan in the truck. So I'm gonna get after cutting this out and we'll see how it fits. All right guys, I have the uh, replacement floor pan cut out. I uh, haven't really done much trimming. I just wanted to show you guys the process. Uh, I did really good on this section here. It turned out really, really great. And uh, uh, this part right here turned out a lot better than the other side, because if you remember on the other side, I had a big gap right here. So I did a better job over here, which is good. And uh, this seam looks really, really good. But then right here, we start to have some overlap problems. And I have marked it, you can't see it here, but the gap, or the, the sheet metal here, the original sheet metal kind of goes at, at this angle. So it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as it goes this way. And uh, up here, uh, same thing, it's overlapped about an eighth inch. So we have some uh, clearancing to do, but that's good because that was our goal was to, you know, make it so we can trim it to fit perfectly and not uh, throw it in and have a big gap somewhere we got to deal with. So it's good. Um, I'm really happy with how this is going. I'm uh, a lot better starting point on this one than I am that one. So that's good. I'm improving. I know there's probably some people out here that uh, out there that can, uh, have done hundreds of these things and can cut them out and get it perfect uh, the, the first time, but I'm definitely not one of those. And uh, if you guys are watching this trying to get some tips, you're probably not either. So I wanted to show you guys how I work through that. Okay, up, uh, another trick I'm doing up in, under here is there's a one inch piece of tape roll on the uh, frame. And I found that is pretty much perfect gap for the, uh, the frame uh, to the floor pan clearance. And if, if you put it in here without that, it just kind of falls in and it's hard to you have to hold it up and it just works really good to set it in there and you can put a bunch of weight on it like i have those lead pieces in here to hold it up against the cab mount here oh there's not much room under here so bear with me if i can see what i'm looking at here okay so starting about here we start to overlap and uh, up here we have more and more overlap so what i'm going to do i have all that weight on that to hold it down to where it's supposed to be and i'm going to come in here with my marker and mark this line here, then I'm pull the pan back out and I'll have a guideline of where to creep up to. Uh, I'm definitely not going to uh, go, go to town and cut exactly on my marker line. I'm going to give it some room and I'm gonna creep up on it and then hopefully it'll fall right into place and uh, be all lined up. So I'm gonna get in here with a marker and mark that out and I'll yank the pan back out and we'll start trimming on it. All right guys, we'll have the floor pan trimmed, the marks we just made on the bottom here. If you see these marks right here, this is where we were. So we, we dropped it down about a quarter inch up here. So it's fitting really well. I'm really happy with the fitment so far. Uh, this is just fitting perfect. A lot of times you get uh, get down to a point like this and you trim something like this and it screws you up back here. But luckily we didn't run into the end of that. It actually fits really good and really well. Uh, and especially this spot right here. Uh, I had a lot of trouble with this area on the other side and it's doing, it's fitting a lot better on this side. So I'm happy that I'm improving my skills and doing a better job. And uh, up here we had to do a little bit of trimming, but we got it down sitting flush. There is a few spots where I need to trim some more. Right here on this corner, I didn't get enough trimmed off and it's still overlapping. And then right here on this corner up here, it's still overlapping like this little section right here. We'll just trim a little bit off of that and uh, make it sit down flush. But everything around the edges and stuff, it's all looking really good. and. Uh, pretty uniform now down here in this uh, corner it's not the same the, the curves aren't the same I'll fix that when I start the welding on it we'll hammer and dolly on some of this and get it to match up a little bit better as I'm welding it because I'll just spot weld it along the along the edges uh, where it's lined up and then work on the other ones but now I have all the weight sitting on here because it needs to be sitting flush on the cab mount that's down there I'm going to go up under here and mark where the cab mount is on the floor pan 
and then I'll take it back out and drill holes uh, where we need to spot weld it. And then I'll do the same here. I'll punch some holes in the edge here so we can spot weld it to the uh, the door seal here. So once I get all that done, we'll, we'll knock the primer off of this, the paint, so I can weld good and uh, get those uh, holes drilled for the spot weld and we'll be ready to burn this thing in. All right, so I have my holes drilled for the spot weld there. You can see those, all of them along here at the bottom of the cab mount and they go up the sides and I also got holes along the edge of the door seal here. And I did went ahead and cut out, if you can see them under the clamp there, cut out little squares for the screw holes for the seal plate because it, it uh, you can see here where the factory did the same thing here. So it, it, it'd be a lot harder to get the screw through there or find the hole basically before you get it all screwed down. So I cut it out before I welded in, uh, get that opened up. But I have pretty much the way it's going to be uh, when I start welding in. I'm just going to start welding anywhere where it's flush. I'll, get, I'll put a tack in it and just kind of work my way around and uh, might have to fiddle with it. Like right here, I'll have to push this in to get it to match up and probably go underneath and push the other out and kind of hammer and dolly it and get it kind of uh, just start start tacking it where it fits good i did i did get these two spots up here fitting nice so those will weld up nice whenever i get it uh, started and uh, basically just have to push it down anywhere where we got our pinch welds make sure that they're flush and we'll get to welding this thing All right guys, well it got fresh off of the welder, got it all welded up, went together really nice, didn't have any major problems. So this thing is coming together really nicely, really happy with how this one went together. So once, uh, since all this is welded, we're gonna grind it all down and smooth it all up obviously. But I wanted to show you guys how it looked straight out of the welder. Another thing I did, uh, these are damp uh, shop rags I shoved up under here because the insulation under this stuff is flammable. And uh, this is actually from the grinder, but I had, I was grinding down here and uh, some sparks up there and started smoldering under the firewall pad. So it's a good idea to uh, make sure you don't have any fires under that firewall pad while you're working here and cause a big problem. So just wanted to give you guys that tip. I'm gonna get this thing ground down and we'll put some sealer on it. All right, well, I've been grinding on this thing all morning. I thought it turned out pretty nice. Uh, looks really good. Actually looks better than the other side, so that's good. Uh, spots right here, you can't even hardly tell that uh, we welded in a pan. Then there's spots like this where you can still see the weld mark. And like right here, we didn't quite get everything lined up just perfect. You can see the weld mark there and kind of along there. But I thought I'm really happy with how this turned out. And uh, we'll put some seam sealer in all this. And then I'm going to coat the floor uh, as best I can with uh, some like pour 15. And, you know, all this rust here, we're going to clean all this up and try to coat this just so we don't have any more problems in the future. And the floor mat I got, this is going to be exposed. So I think I'm going to just paint this black. So, uh... I, I don't know how it's going to look, but we'll see how it turns out. I think that will be better than this rust here. So we're going to see how it turns out. I'm going to get this thing coated, and uh, we'll have this floor pan all finished up. All right, well, before I coat the floor, I wanted to show you guys how the seam sealer stuff turned out. I thought it turned out really nice. We put it on the, uh, I put it, uh, on the weld mark here all and tried to uh, keep it all nice and smooth, and then I sanded it down. So you can see uh, the high spots there, that's where the weld is, and it kind of filled in the low spots. Kind of used it kind of as a body filler, but also, uh, you know, I wanted to seal up if there's any pinholes or something in the, the weld. I wanted to seal those up good. So I thought it turned out really good. It's nice and smooth, 
there are a few spots where I could use some more, but I'm not going to worry about it because uh, this truck, you know, it's if I was doing like a uh, full blown frame off restoration, I'd probably go over this again with some body fill and prime it and sand it down so you you would never tell. But on this truck, you know, I, this is good enough for this truck. Uh, I accomplished what I wanted to do here. And uh, I thought I did a real good job here on this floor pan on this side, especially that side. It's OK. And this side is better than OK. So I think uh, I'm learning as I go, which is the goal. Now, when I paint this, I'm not going to I'm not going to scrape off all this rubberized undercoating stuff or whatever this is. I'm guessing it's some kind of sound deadener that the factory put in. Um, I'm not going to scrape all that off because it's a pain and there's no rust under that stuff. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to paint uh, the floor pans, all the bare metal. And I'm also going to do under the seat here where this uh, this rust is, where the paint's kind of flaking off. I'm going to get all that coated so not to worry about that in the future. And especially these areas right here that are going to be exposed because the floor mat doesn't cover the, the whole, uh, didn't go all the way back here to the back. It ends right here. So I'm going to get after coating this and uh, get a layer of uh, stuff on it. And then uh, we'll be done with this floor pan project. All right, guys. Well, the floor is officially done. I just got done coating the floor. Uh, turned out really nice. I think it's just overall, I'm happy with the result. It's better than I expected. You guys will have to let me know what you guys think, how it turned out. But I got everything uh, painted. This is like a satin black. It is still kind of drying, so it's a little bit glossier than it'll be uh, when it's done. But it, uh, it uh, dries out pretty nice and it's nice deep satin finish, I think is nice. Uh, if you can see here, you know, right here would have been my, where my weld marks are. And you can see a little bit of marks. But uh, overall, I think it's really nice, uh, especially for a floor, you know, something that's never going to be seen. I'm just kind of, you know, trying to make it as good as I can and uh, make it look like you, nobody did floor plans in it. But if you're looking close, you can definitely tell. But uh, I think it turned out really nice. You guys have to let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. If you've uh, done floor pans before and you think if you saw something I did that I uh, should do different, let me know. And uh, give me some tips if you guys have any. Or if you saw something that uh, you didn't know about that I did that you thought helped you out, let me know as well down in the comments. And uh, you guys can uh, you know share the knowledge if you guys have any tips and tri tricks for me that I missed out on this one. Because I'm definitely going to be doing some more in the future. But let me know what you guys think. Now, I've ordered a bunch more parts for this thing. Like I said, this thing's really snowballing. And uh, I've actually ordered uh, some new parts from uh, uh, the guys over at Complete Performance. Got a new headliner. The headliner's right here, actually. And I got a new steering wheel coming. And I've decided to paint the steering column because it's going to look kind of uh, out of place now. So I'm going to be pulling the steering column out and painting the steering wheel. So things are still snowballing. I'm still getting into it. But this is going to be a real cool truck when, when we get it done. So anyway, I'm real happy with this. I can't wait to drive this thing. Next up, we're going to be doing the brakes and uh, getting this thing where it actually run and drive. I can't believe I did all this work and we haven't even driven the thing yet. So next up is going to be on the lift. And another thing, I'm going to paint the... Uh, I didn't show you guys because it's, it's low to the ground and hard to get under there with a the camera. But on the, under, the underside uh, of the floor pan, if you wanted to make it perfect like... Uh, where you could barely see the weld marks. You're gonna to have to do the same treatment on the bottom side with that weld seam. I'm not really gonna mess with it on this truck. I am gonna paint it, however. So when I have it up on the lift doing the brakes, I'm gonna paint the uh, the floor pan anywhere where the, uh, the primer's been scraped up and around the weld seam to get all that painted up so it doesn't get uh, rusted. But anyway, I'm gonna get after it and quit talking. Get, give me a like if you like this truck. Subscribe if you wanna see more of it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.